good afternoon, Chair. It's certainly nice taking Nigeria at last, given the complexities uh, of the country. Uh, we've made uh, two variations because we didn't have uh, enough uh, information on uh, prices. So emphasis is on uh, non-income uh, poverty. We are also interested in the uh, inter-country uh, variation of what is happening at the sub-national level, which is the main uh, work we've done uh, here. Uh, by and large, a lot has been said about uh, what is happening at the macro level in Africa, uh, given the fact that uh, poverty, the rate of poverty decrease has not been uh, commensurate to economic uh, growth. And that has uh, preoccupied very many analysts, including very many of the regional institutions, African Development Bank, what have you. Uh, there's a lot of interest now, not just in that, but in the wide disparities in poverty between African countries, which I think is part of uh, what uh, the GAP studies are all about. Uh, like we've seen in some of the case studies that we've taken, uh, countries like uh, Morocco, Gambia, Senegal, Cameroon, and Ethiopia, and Ghana. Uh, I don't like uh, mentioning Ghana because Ghana is uh, our neighbor. Uh, we did that here, dear everybody. They seem to be making significant progress towards uh, poverty eradication. Uh, whereas the so called elephant, that's the, like we heard at the last presentation, and uh, Nigeria are moving in the opposite uh, direction. They've not made uh, much uh, progress. In fact, that of Nigeria is puzzling when you tie that to what has happened to oil, the oil boom. Moreover, the country has had uh, some of the highest uh, GDP growth rates in the world. Uh, you now want to know what exactly what is happening to poverty. But there has been a major discourse in the country ahead of the 2015 uh, political you know, elections. So the trust of this study is to empirically analyze uh, multidimensional uh, multi poverty in uh, Nigeria. Uh, like I said, if you look at uh, the growth rate, aggregate GDP growth rate and poverty incidence, they are moving in opposite directions. So we want to sort of uh, confirm or refute uh, what is happening to poverty in Nigeria. Quite nice. Uh, I was um, hoping uh, Professor Eric Tobin will not be here, so that will ask me which of the uh, inequality I'm presenting, but is here. I uh, will start with the uh, national poverty figures. This is from the Central Statistical Office. What you find is that nationally, uh, poverty has sort of increased for 27.2% in 1980 uh, to about 69% uh, in 2010, which is a uh, very alarming. And there is marked disparities between uh, urban and uh, rural. For administrative convenience, Nigeria is also divided into geopolitical zones. I mean, I'm sure very many of you have been hearing of the Boko Haram crisis, which is mainly in the north. I mean, if you've been following these poverty figures, you're not going to be surprised. It's just the magnitude, because it's like uh, an inkling of what is going to happen uh, in that part. Poverty I'm going to demonstrate as it testified in those figures and go to see in this uh, uh, particular paper. Uh, like I said, uh, Nigeria is a federation. Uh, it's good that you move from the national figures to what is happening at the sub national level. Uh, especially considering the fact that uh, we have 36 states and some of these states are as big or if not bigger than some several countries. Take Lagos State, for example. Lagos State alone has a population of about 20 million. And if you use uh, the GDP uh, to compute, you will find that if Lagos were to be a country, it would be the 11th biggest country in Africa. River State would be number 15, while Delta State would be number 21. I mean, using GDP to run. So interested in knowing what is happening at that uh, subnational level. Which is why what we've done all over the paper, you are going to see that we measure like those are the state level poverty estimates provided by the national level. We sort of uh, prepare a sort of standpoint for us to compare what we've uh, done. Uh, without wasting time, uh, poverty too. 
I mean, there is a marked inequality in Nigeria by any standard when you look at it. Uh, looking at the Gini coefficient at national levels, uh, it has uh, increased from uh, 0 0.43 to 0 0.45. But what is uh, perhaps most puzzling, I mean, the World Bank has been able to document some findings that shows that uh, uh, the top 20% of uh, Nigerian population own almost 45% of the wealth. I mean, it's puzzling and uh, it's reflected in what you see uh, on the uh, ground. Uh, so in terms of uh, what we did, uh, because we didn't have uh, data of prices or something, so emphasis is on me measuring uh, non-income uh, poverty. And, uh, the approach which we adopted is uh, the first uh, order dominance, which was uh, recently applied by Ant uh, et al. But before that, to put everything into the perspective, I mean, there is just general agreement that poverty is a multidimensional phenomenon. But uh, actually measuring it, there are a lot of uh, methodological difficulties. I mean, several approaches have been used, as we've been seeing in this room. And there is no agreement on, the, on what you think is the best methodology. In fact, currently, as we are talking now, a controversy is raging on uh, whether you should have uh, a scalar indicator, I mean, judging from uh, the recent uh, Human Development Report that has tried to present some form of uh, multidimensional dimension of poverty, uh, whether you should have a scalar, why people like uh, Ravalion have opted for the Dutch uh, approach. Uh, well, people are trying to resolve that controversy now. But uh, by and large, what we can state that is that uh, the methodology which we've adopted is particularly apt uh, because uh, what we have is uh, ordinary information at the micro level. I mean, that methodology can capture that. Uh, not only that, like I mentioned, uh, we are also interested in what is happening at the sub-national level, which is why we're very happy with this uh, methodology. Uh, one good thing about this FOD methodology is that uh, it does not depend on a weighting scheme, which it will do some element of being biased. Uh, moreover, it removes all these ad hoc simplification and assumptions about the social welfare function. But rather, what you get is just a form of a binary indicators. It will tell you whether you either you are deprived or not uh, deprived. I will not go to bore you about the, the methodological perspective because of time uh, constraints. Uh, but basically, what we did was uh, to use uh, two main data sets. The harmonized Nigeria Legal Standard Surveys of 2009 from 2010. Uh, we're able to use 71,000 households and the, the comparable national living standard survey of 2003-04 uh, which had about 19,154 households that were directly usable. Uh, you can look at the paper where we documented uh, very many of the transformations uh, which we did. Uh, in terms of uh, some of the results, I'm not going to bore you, let me just present uh, some of the main results. Uh, by and large, you find that uh, our results are sort of, uh, we don't have enough evidence to justify that uh, poverty has intensified and that what we have is of, that is static over time. Uh, if you look at the acute deprivation from the tables, you find that uh, uh, why it was 5.7% in 2003-04 for national aid, it marginally reduced uh, to only 2.6% uh, in the 2010. But for those who are not deprived at all, there was just a marginal improvement by 2%, if you look at this as it is very well. I mean. uh, so also, uh, in terms of some of the other results, uh, we will use uh, five indicators. Uh, two out of the five indicators registered in general marginal improvement nationally in evolution over the two time periods. Whereas uh, sanitation, electricity, and education declined, if you look at what happened between 2003-04 and 2009-10. Uh, like we said I mean, in the last one, that the acute deprivation, not that mentioned, why it was 5.7%, it declined marginally. Uh, looking at, uh, because you form of look at the dominance of the results from uh, the methodology, uh, you find that as at uh, 2010, uh, 12 states 
had zero uh, percent of dominating compared to several states which had in the 2004 results, which implied that five more states lost their socioeconomic strength. Um, and if you look at uh, the states, Zafara, Bauchi, Benue, Bono, and Gombe, they are all in the northern part of the uh, country. Uh, so also, uh, using our bootstrap uh, results, uh, the result uh, it may not be very clear, but uh, that's according to you to read the paper. But the summary is, uh, by and large, uh, it conforms to what you expect a priori. Lagos had a 79 chance of probability of dominating, followed by rivers and a number of states. I mean, these are all, uh, if you look at GDP, the wealthy uh, states or uh, something. Uh, so also, we look at uh, the issue of uh, net dominance to look at what has happened. I mean, you're going to say that Lagos, uh, for example, also dominates here. But you find that very many of the states, there was a decline in performance when you compare what is happening in 2004 relative to uh, 2010. I mean, they lost their performance, their dominance. I mean, all those things are presented in the main results. Uh, Lagos, like an example, again, maintained its high dominance and it will improve over time. Uh, why states like River Abia and Nambra had a significant improvement in web being web being? Uh, others like uh, Kaduna Kano, Ninja, lost their strength by 2010. I'm particularly happy with some of these results because uh, my major job is to monitor the performance of these governors so I can show them up already that this is uh, a reflection of uh, part of uh, what is happening. So, quickly to round up. Uh, what we can state is that uh, the results indicate that uh, Nigeria has registered only fewer gains in non-income poverty, which sort of conform with what is happening. Uh, and also, if you drill into those results, uh, you find that rural areas are characterized by a higher proportion of acute uh, deprivation in both time periods. The analysis, the state analysis, also indicates that uh, about a third of Nigeria that six states uh, had a negative change in. Uh, zero deprivation, which means it's worsening over time. Uh, the FOD analysis do provide no very results that Nigeria was stagnant in the two time periods. We cannot actually say whether there was much improvement. Uh, so from the point of policy, we are suggesting that uh, it is necessary for the authorities to realize uh, why they are looking for inclusive growth. They should be cognizant of the fact that poverty rates appear to be both geographically concentrated uh, in some states as well as in the northern, uh, the rural parts of the country. I thank you for your attention.